Hello, I'm Jonathan Kay from the University of Massachusetts Medical School in Worcester. Welcome to Room Now. I'm here at ACR Convergence 2020 on Monday, the last day of the meeting, and I am sitting in my home office where I've been watching uh, videos of the various sessions. I was impressed with an abstract this morning that was presented by Si Young Kim uh, from the Brigham Women's Hospital Pharmacoepidemiology Group on cardiovascular risk in rheumatoid arthritis patients treated with methotrexate or hydroxychloroquine. Now, there have been data suggesting, based on observational data, that the increased cardiovascular risk that's observed in rheumatoid arthritis uh, is decreased with methotrexate therapy. Uh, Hyun Choi published a paper a number of years ago showing that methotrexate therapy decreased mortality in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Paul Ridker published a study, a large study of about 5,000 patients with stable atherosclerosis uh, who were treated with low-dose methotrexate uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine in February of 2019. This study was stopped prematurely after about 2.3 years because the incidence of cardiovascular events was not lower in those treated with low-dose methotrexate compared to placebo. So this raises the question, how does this apply to patients with rheumatoid arthritis? Since that study was conducted in nearly 5,000 patients with stable atherosclerosis, but who did not have rheumatoid arthritis. So to study the effect of methotrexate on cardiovascular events in rheumatoid arthritis patients, the investigators performed a claims database uh, cohort study uh, using data from Medicare parts A, B, and D between January of 2008 and the end of December 2016 and linked the Medicare database with the National Death Index. They included patients, all of whom were older than 65 years because they were on Medicare, and they enrolled rheumatoid arthritis patients who newly started methotrexate or hydroxychloroquine. Uh, they excluded patients who previously used any DMARDs, uh, patients who had recently been hospitalized for myocardial infarction, unstable angina, stroke, transient ischemic attack, heart failure, or coronary revascularization during the previous 60 days prior to beginning either methotrexate or hydroxychloroquine. Uh, the date of starting therapy became the index date, and then patients were followed until the end of the study. The primary endpoint was the occurrence of a major adverse cardiovascular event uh, with a composite endpoint of myocardial infarction, stroke, or cardiovascular death. And then secondary endpoints were individual events, uh, myocardial infarction, stroke, heart failure, cardiovascular death, or all-cause mortality. Now, uh, also assessed patients for many different covariates, including demographic features, rheumatoid arthritis-related medication use, use of corticosteroids, use of non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or coxibs, which might increase the cardiovascular risk, comorbidities, uh, the Charlson comorbidity index, a frailty index, other medication use and healthcare utilization. Patients were censored at the end of the study period or when they discontinued drug, or had an outcome or died. Uh, they anal analyzed the data uh, looking at patients controlled with the propensity score matching based on baseline characteristics, and they calculated incidence rates for each of these events in the propensity score matched cohorts, calculating hazard ratios and 95% confidence intervals with a Cox proportional hazards model. They enrolled uh, a final cohort of nearly 60,000 patients uh, 35,699 on methotrexate, 23,630 who were starting hydroxychloroquine. Patients were well matched for age, uh, sex, and comorbidities, including atrial fibrillation, heart failure, coronary artery disease, stroke, or transient ischemic attack, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, peripheral vascular disease, diabetes, chronic kidney disease, and chronic liver disease. In terms of any oral glucocorticoid use, cumulative prednisone or equivalent dose, and use of NSAIDs or coxibs. These were also matched as well as use of drugs for 
treatment of cardiovascular disease or diabetes. The primary analysis, the incidence rate per thousand patient years for methotrexate therapy in terms of major cardiovascular events, that's cumulative myocardial infarction, stroke, or cardiovascular death, the incidence rate per thousand patient years was 23.39 for methotrexate. And for hydroxychloroquine, it was 24.33. So the hazard ratio was 0.96 for methotrexate compared to hydroxychloroquine with 95% confidence intervals across unity. And the cumulative incidence over time uh, was not different, uh, not significantly different for the two drugs. In terms of the secondary analysis, however, they found a lower hazard ratio of 0.80 for myocardial infarction and a 0.060 for heart failure and a higher hazard ratio for stroke of 1.33, all of which had confidence intervals, 95% confidence intervals that did not cross unity. So the secondary analyses revealed a significantly lower incidence of myocardial infarction or heart failure among patients with rheumatoid arthritis treated with methotrexate compared to those treated with hydroxychloroquine, but a higher incidence of stroke. Interesting in that this is a paradoxical observation of different cardiovascular outcomes. So this study concluded uh, that in this large observational study of older rheumatoid arthritis patients enrolled in Medicare, they found no difference in the risk of major adverse cardiovascular events the cumulative uh, MACE uh, grouping between patients who newly started methotrexate and those who newly started hydroxychloroquine. However, the secondary analyses, as I just mentioned, showed a greater stroke risk, but a lower risk of myocardial infarction and hospitalized heart failure among those treated with methotrexate compared to those initiating hydroxychloroquine therapy. No substantial difference in all-cause mortality between the two groups. So perhaps methotrexate therapy in rheumatoid arthritis patient lowers the risk of myocardial infarction and heart failure, but at the price of a perhaps slightly higher risk of stroke. These are interesting data, and it will be interesting to see whether these uh, findings are borne out in an analysis of another claims database looking at individuals younger than age 65, and then uh, perhaps Uh, an interventional study might be conducted in rheumatoid arthritis patients uh, to try to assess the validity of these findings prospectively. I'm Jonathan Kay, and I welcome you to go to Room Now website to look at other abstracts and other panel discussions, and look forward to seeing you again on Room Now.